and uh, it's his original. I have never seen this one either, uh, which I know is probably sad for people who are really into films. But you see, my stuff, you know, that I've always watched is stuff like, you know, Ghostbusters, and Back to the Future, and Goonies, and Batman, and, you know, other stuff like that, and Pee Wee's Playhouse, and Ernest, and, you know, I never, you know, I didn't start getting into deep film, lo you know, lo like it until you know, the last few years when I started, my, when my collection really started to go, to take off, really started to take off and go somewhere, mean something, and so I figured, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get more into stuff, things that I never watched as a kid, but I got the original Clash of Titans, I heard this one's better than the, re the uh, remake anyway, so I'm sure I'll be happy, and then a few other ones here. And this is the other one I got from Best Buy for five dollars. Dangerous Minds, which is definitely an old movie from nineteen ninety six. It uh, features Gangsta's Paradise, a special music video uh, performed by Coolio. Uh, I remember this. This uh, I've never seen the movie, but I remember I remember the soundtrack because I remember when the Greenbush had the uh, an arcade in town called the Swamp, and they had those those old CD players that uh, played the disc deal you know, while you're. You can watch the disc bin while it's uh, playing music and all that stuff. You know which ones I'm talking about. The old sound that has the three discs right, the, right on tops, you know, turning around and whatnot while you can make your selections and everything. The old style CD players. And this was, they had the soundtrack to this. And uh, <clears throat> I thought it was pretty cool. Gangsta's Paradise is one of those songs. And I'm not huge on on uh, hip hop, but, but unless it's good hip hop, then I'll listen to it. And this is one of those songs that I really don't mind. I really would definitely listen to over and over again if I had the chance. Actually, I do have the chance because I have Napster and YouTube. So, anyway, so I got this one, and uh, I can't wait to check this out. Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, from Batman, Batman or Batman Returns, anyway. But, you know, Catwoman. <laughs> and then two more I got, and these are Walmart stuff. Uh, Walmart just released a bunch of celebrity series. I remember we were talking about Bruce Willis and all that stuff. Well, I got, I found another one. One I, I would have gotten probably if it was more expensive, but this is only like seven fifty, in Walmart right now. The whole nine yards, and I think I've seen this one before. I don't, I or I think I have, but I don't remember the the plot or anything. And I've seen the whole ten yards too, but I just I forgot kind of what happened. You know, maybe short term memory or something. I mean, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Pretty. It's a. It's a. It looks like a funny movie. You know Matthew Perry from uh, Friends. I mean, I think he's hilarious. You know, some people might disagree. Some people might think he's not, but I think he is. Uh, I think that's what makes the Friends show kind of work. Him and uh, Joey Tribbiani. You know, Matt Matt LeBlanc and all that. But anyway, Bruce Willis, the whole nine yards. Can't wait to watch it again. Finally, because <clears throat> I realized that. <clears throat> my Blu-ray, <clears throat> oh, my Blu-ray collection is kind of small, only because of the fact that you know I don't really buy buy many Blu-rays because they are kind of expensive. Uh, you know, and the ones that are really really cheap are not ones I really want to watch. I want to watch some good movies, ones that I think that I know that I'll like. And this is one that I haven't watched yet, but I did open it. It's called Fanboys. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I know one of my favorite actors from uh, Detroit Rock City is in this, and that's uh, Sam Huntington. And Sam Huntington's been around since like 1997, when he made his uh, feature film debut in Jungle to Jungle with Tim Allen, and then eventually uh, he did uh, Detroit Rock City, and then he did what else did he do? He, he did a couple. He did a few other ones too. A uh, Roland Kansas, I know he did, and he also, I believe, he played Jimmy. In uh, Superman Returns, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, something like that. But anyway, fanboys. It's supposed to be really funny. It's supposed to be about these people, guys who uh, who are really big and you know, are sci-fi geeks, but really love Star Wars and Star Trek, because William Shatner's in this one too. So I've heard good things about this this film, and uh, I can't wait to see it. So it was only fifteen dollars, and I figured these are one of the, I mean, especially for Blu-ray. Uh, I really believe that uh, that when it comes to like older releases, now this is not that old a release, it's only two years old, but when it comes to like really old releases, that's when you want to buy it on Blu-ray. You don't want to buy too many new films on Blu-ray because one, they're too damn expensive, and two, they're, they're no different than the DVDs. I mean, the, the quality is, is pretty damn good even on DVD. 
it doesn't have to be that sharp a picture to be good, you know. I mean, most new releases, you know, when it comes to computer effects and everything, you know, if it's a love story or whatever, it's not really worth getting on Blu-ray. But if it's like a special effect action movie, then it's probably worth it when it comes to new or old. But, uh, yeah, so, but I, I'd rather get it for older ones if I can find, because then you can tell the difference, you know, from the way back days of VHS tapes or beta compared to DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah. So, anyway, so that's my little, uh, DVD update as of today, uh, as of Monday, August 15th, or, no, August 16th, 2010. Oh, one other thing, I wanted to get you guys' comments on, uh, what you guys, uh, to all, any wrestling fans who watch my videos, what did you guys think of SummerSlam last night? Uh, I watched a little bit of it, I didn't order it, I just found a site that was sold it, like, on, uh, Daily Motion and, uh, Justin.tv. I know, oh, it's uh, you know against the law. That's copyright, but you know what? Who gives a fuck? If I can find it for free, watch it live. Cause you know what? We're buy the DVDs of it anyway. You know when they come out, cause Money in the Bank comes out tomorrow, and we're buying it anyway. You know I haven't seen it, but even if I would have seen it, I still want to buy a DVD, cause I'm trying to get into more current WWE DVDs as well as old WWE DVDs. I didn't buy a season of Raw one and two yet, or uh, the beginning. I was going to, but uh, I'm I'm supposed to get some money here this coming weekend from a friend. Uh, so maybe I'll buy it, you know, when I have more money. But the whole purpose of Grand Forks is just to, to have somewhat of a good time. And we went and saw the movie, The Other Guys, as you know. And, uh, yeah, so it, it was fun. But I I was surprised with SummerSlam, man. For you, for you, those who haven't seen it yet, you will definitely be surprised of who, a couple people that make a return. But I also got to thinking, you know, it really feels like it was, uh, because it was the same venue, uh, as it was last year, Los Angeles, the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. And uh, I felt that it was kind of a repeat of last year's kind of in some scenarios because the first match that they had was the Intercontinental Championship match between uh, now Intercontinental Champion uh, Dolph Ziggler versus uh, Kofi Kingston, and it was the first match. And if you remember last year's SummerSlam, uh, Dolph Ziggler was not the Intercontinental Champion. He was the guy trying to get his first major singles title. And he faced then the Intercontinental Champion Rey Mysterio and lost. But that was the opening contest. Uh, and then one other thing, Undertaker uh, made his return last night. and uh, But this time in a, in a casket. And uh, finally uh, making his return uh, uh, against Kane. But last year, the Undertaker made his return as well at SummerSlam. Uh, but this time facing CM Punk after CM Punk defeated Jeff Hardy, you know, in that uh, TLC match. So I think a lot of the things that happened last year uh, kind of repeated itself this year because it almost kind of used the same set, too, and the same ring attire and everything besides not using that old uh, 40s uh, circus feel or whatever. And actually, you know, they used uh, different uh, graphics this time. But I don't know. I felt it was kind of repeat. What do you guys think? Let me know, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for another great daily summer vlog. I have no idea what we're going to do. I'm trying to get my friend Greg to be on camera, but uh, we haven't really hung out that much, and uh, I don't know if I will be successful or not on that. But I think I have a, some some old videos of it, you know if you want to see what he looks like uh, and whatnot. So anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow for another great daily summer vlog. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we'll just wing it. All right, bye bye.